If you recognize that somebody pointing a gun at you has a non-functional gun, it's time to act. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's quick thinking defender comes to us from Chicago, Illinois. BakerTargets.com is where I get the targets you see me shoot all the time on Active Self Protection Extra. They ship fast, their prices are great, and they have all kinds of targets, both for competitive shooting, defensive shooting, and fun too. Check them out. Owner of a car wash here is closing up for the night, but he's left his front door open. And because of that, dude walks in with a mask on, a hood up, and a gun out, and he is going to demand the contents of the till. The owner, I've linked in a news story with an interview of the owner, and he says, he just kept telling me, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money. And he's like, dude, I don't have access. I don't have the key to get you in to the register right now. And the guy's like, oh yeah? And he goes to chamber his gun to show him he's serious. Well, he causes a major malfunction in the gun. I don't know if it's a major malfunction or just a slide lock back because the magazine was empty. And now our erstwhile armed robber is trying to fix it while our owner's recognizing this gun's not right. So he is gonna reach out, try to grab the guy's wrist while the guy pulls the gun back because of course he doesn't want him to grab it. Well, our owner's gonna chase him down a little bit, try to get that gun back from him or away from him again. Well, dude's gonna get it back away from him a couple of times and then threaten him with it some more and say, hey man, you know, I still want the money out of the till or whatever. Well, now our owner's gonna go in there, actually do a little martial artsy stuff here with a little bit of a, you know, a knee to the thigh and then disarm him, take his gun away from him and that's gonna cause our dummy to put his shoe back on that he lost and then run off. Our owner is gonna run outside, see that he's gone, come back and call the cops. Cops have not caught this guy. They don't think they're gonna catch this guy. Although I highly doubt that they let the owner keep that firearm, which seems very unfair because he paid for it at risk of his life. So I think he should have been able to keep it. Now, I think it would have been a whole lot less dangerous had he had a firearm on him. And we're going to talk about that in the lessons. But hey, where are all my Illinois peeps at who have their firearms owner ID card and have gotten their CCW? Get your hands up, would you? So of course, if your place of business is closed, friends, and you're closing up for the night, which you're probably going to do by yourself, you might have some cash around. Lock your dang door, right? <clears throat> Make sure that your door is locked because obviously, you know, uh, miscreants coming in after hours, there's no reason to leave it open. My guess is it's just an oversight, right? This is why we use checklists to close our businesses. Next, of course, this guy comes in, hood up and mask on. It's 2023, that is a prelude to an armed robbery beyond all question. There are still a few people wearing masks out there in the world, but pretty darn rare in the United States and certainly not with a hood up. That is a prelude to an armed robbery. Paying attention in your world might give you a little bit more time to get your own gun out and get to work. Now then, he doesn't have that time because of course he's paying attention to his computer and I, and I get that. I do love here that he is using a very good surrender posture, right? So he has got, you notice his, his fingers splayed, his palms out, showing the guy, hey man, I don't want any problems. I also like that his hands are below his eye level. I would suggest here his hands are very out wide. I'd suggest you bring those hands in a little bit. Okay, man, no problem here. This is a much better defensive fence and a better place to start a counter ambush from. But I mean, hey, I think he's doing a really good job here of that surrender posture. And I want you to use purposeful compliance here. Look for an opportunity to better yourself. Now, now listen, if he's carrying a concealed firearm, I don't see a whole lot of opportunities here. Guys, eyes are really on him. Maybe if he has a really rocket fast draw, but I think that would be very, very difficult here. But now he notices that the guy has, has tried to chamber around and he has a malfunctioning gun. Now it's time to go. Get your own gun out and go to work on that guy. And I know some people are gonna ask, well, is it legal? I know he can't shoot that gun. Yes, he can clear that malfunction relatively quickly. He is threatening you with that gun and you have every right to believe and should believe that he can quickly clear it and get it back in the fight and it might only take him a few seconds. However, I think you have all the justification in the world that he's threatening you with a gun to use your own gun. So this is a place that you definitely go for it. Now, instead, he's going to wait because he doesn't know what he's going to do here. He's trying to formulate a plan. Well, if you're going to go for it, go for it. Now, of course, the disarm attempt here is going to be kind of ham-fisted and very difficult for a couple of reasons. Number one, because the counter between them, so he's going to have a hard time with the distance. Number two, what he does here is he doesn't go for the gun. He goes for the hand. So remember, we always say go for the gun first. The hand with the gun first, the arm with the gun. He's actually going for the arm, not the hand. Third, and the person last. So, so you want to control that gun if you can. I think if he'd actually gone for the gun, he might have gotten it and, and just snatched it away from him in that moment, all kung fu style. But instead, he is able here at least to dodge it away from him. But you notice that the countertop makes it very difficult. I don't recommend disarm attempts over counters. 
because you can't control the distance. And that five Ds plus one, control the distance first, then you have to deflect, dominate, distract, disarm, disable. That's how that five Ds goes. And you notice here he's trying to grab it again. Well, listen, if you know that that gun is out of battery, if you know it's not immediately deliverable, recognize you're fighting a person here, not just a gun. And so this is where your empty handed skills come into play. I mean, unless he's got a gun on him, right? If he's got a gun, get your gun out and, and go to work on this guy. But if you don't, this is where standing striking should be really useful to you. Again, some standing striking should be a part of everybody's vocabulary. Some standing grappling stuff here and some grounded grappling, of course, part of your, your empty handed skills as well. Now notice here, watch how martial artsy this is. He's gonna have to deal with the leveraging arm. So it's one of the things that we talk about is that the guy sticks his leveraging arm out, keeps the gun away from him. If you don't know how to deal with a leveraging arm, if that's not part of your martial arts curriculum, you're a fool. And it should be a significant part of it because we see this all the time. Remember, they use a leveraging arm differently if they got a knife in their hand versus if they have a gun. When they, like here he has a gun, he's gonna use that leveraging arm to push you away, to keep you away from the gun because he doesn't want you to touch that gun. If he has a knife, it's opposite. He's gonna use it to keep you close in order to, to leave the knife in range. Now you notice here, he gets the little knee to the thigh and then a twisting, turning disarm attempt. Pretty good martial arts disarm there. Pretty martial arts, he kind of looks to me like he might have had some training at that point. And then he drives the guy off. Of course, you know, I'm gonna say, don't chase fleeing felons. Once he's gone, let him go because you don't know if he's got buddies outside. You don't know if he's gonna turn and wanna do more damage to you. You've already paid at risk of your life for dominance in the space you're in, so keep that dominance. That said, man, I really commend this business owner. Great attitude here. He lives in a high crime area. He's had a couple other problems. If you go look at the news stories that I've linked in the description, and he has a fantastic attitude. Took the options that he had, ended up getting the disarm, and covered his ASP.